don't have a root and branch opposition to religious education in the sense of education about religion. I think it's important that children should learn about religion. What I am against is the labelling of children with the religion of their parents when the children are too young to know what their own views are. I'm all for children being taught about lots of different religions and then making up their own minds later. What I really object to, and I think it's actually abusive to children, is to take a tiny child and say, you are a Christian child or you are a Muslim child. I've got you here saying that the exclusively religious schools are, quotes, wicked. Well, I think, it's, I think it is wicked if, if children are told you are a member of such and such a faith simply because your parents are. Because after all, every child should be able to work out for themselves that it's an accident of birth that they just happen to be born into, say, a Catholic family or a Muslim family. And for that, fam and for that reason, you oppose faith schools because, in your view, by definition, that's what they're I think, uh, seeking as to As far achieve. as I can tell, by, by definition, a faith school is propagating one particular faith and it makes the assumption that the children in that school belong to a particular faith which is presumably the faith of their of their parents when you have faith schools it does seem to me talking about a catholic child or or a anglican child uh, you really are making an assumption which is presumptuous and is i think wicked uh, i i I don't think you can get out of it by just saying, oh, it's a, it's a cultural matter. It isn't a cultural matter. You're being taught doctrine. You're being taught doctrine as your doctrine, as opposed to that other child's doctrine in a different, in a different school. That seems to me to be wicked. We have a right to bring up our children in accordance with our beliefs, which have served us over the centuries well. Now, I'll give you the same right to bring up your children in the way that you want. What about the rights of the children themselves? Well, the rights of the children come when, uh, when they are uh, as is, uh, they're old enough to understand the issues. Until they get to that age, it's the parents' responsibility. And do you teach them you that apostates should be that. punished? You may not share that, but that is my religion. That is the way I've been brought up. And I, have, I bring that child into this world. I educate him. I give him everything. It's my right to make sure that I bring him. And I, I take issue with that. You think that it's wicked. Well, that's your point of view. I know that's going to make him a better human being. And what's missing is when you talk about faith, you don't look at what faith teaches. First and foremost, what faith teaches is that, listen, you're a human being, so respect your fellow human beings. And I think that's an important point that you don't want to discuss. What is the penalty for apostasy? And that is the thing apostasy? that you fail to discuss, and that's why you've got those prejudicial views about faith. With what respect. is the penalty for apostasy? What do you teach the children will happen to them if they give up the Muslim faith? Well, let's bring Can the I... debate back into Britain. What is the penalty for apostasy? Well, we, use this, we hear the language, tolerate people of other religion. We also hear the word now being bandied about saying, learning to respect people of other religion. This is a red herring, because in reality what they mean is this. We are right and they are wrong, but we won't make a fuss about it at the moment. They'll find out soon enough when they die. So this is really a very, at the moment, the, the way the faith schools are kind of run is the way they're, they're presenting faiths themselves are very exclusivist, um, very kind of um, divisive, and I would say s something that should not be funded by with public money. I would be thoroughly in favor of education in the Bible as literature. Uh, you can't understand English literature without, without the Bible. You can't take your allusions. And that's an aspect of what the bishop was saying. He's absolutely right. This is a Christian country. Historically, it's a Christian country. You can't understand English history or English literature without uh, a knowledge of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think one should say that, that, that the act of collective worship, I don't approve of it, but nevertheless, the Christian religion, especially I think the Anglican religion, is benign by comparison. If a child at the end of its school career wants to give up religion, the church will quite happily say, OK, go your own way. The penalty for apostasy in the Christian religion is not death. There is no penalty for apostasy at all in the Christian religion. The Christian religion is comparatively benign and we should respect it as such. Um, Richard Dawkins, does a God-shaped perspective or set of values uh, do any harm to the way in which children should be taught at schools right now. Thou shalt now. have no other God before me, thou shalt make no graven image, thou shalt keep the Sabbath holy. What on earth's that got to do with anything to do, to do with morals? That's the Ten Commandments, or at least three of them. Uh, it would be deeply depressing if the only way children could get moral values was from religion, either from scripture, and God knows we don't want them to get it from scripture, I mean just look at scripture, or from uh, kind of being afraid of God.
being intimidated by, by, by God. Anybody who is good for only those two reasons is not really being good at all. Why not teach children things like the golden rule, do as you would be done by, how would you like it if other children did that to you? So, so why do you do it to them? So, so God is not only irrelevant, God is damaging I to didn't this. say God was damaging, but I think it, it's, it's depressing that anybody should suggest that you actually need God in order to uh, to be to be moral. I would hope that our morals come from a better source than that and that therefore they are genuinely moral rather than based on outmoded scripture or based on fear. I actually think that um, oftentimes religious principles are actually quite immoral to be quite frank and I think that if you look at examples where um, uh, girls are, t uh, are, are sexualized at a very young age, for example, if you look at Islamic schools where they're forced to avail, where they're taught that they're different from boys, where they're not allowed to listen to music, where they're, not, where they're, where they're completely segregated, and, and many such examples like that. I think, uh, in fact, um, if there is any uh, good morality that comes out of uh, even religious education, it's not because of religion, it's oftentimes despite religion, and it's uh, the result of uh, an enlightenment and a vast social movement uh, for 21st century values that have had an effect on religion as well. Let me, let me bring in, I will come to you in a moment, let me bring in Mohammed Mukadam in response to that, that at Muslim schools the uh, women are put into, girls are put into a position uh, where they are diminished as human beings. Well, it's often the, the case where people are ignorant of what goes on in faith schools and Muslim schools. The fact is uh, our schools are run along a legal lines. They te uh, treat both sexes equally, provide them the best opportunities. So that's often a case of people who have prejudices and ignorance. Maryam? I mean, I think it's typical of uh, Islamic schools and uh, the political Islamic movement to label any, any criticism a sort of prejudice and thereby racism, thereby trying to uh, make people uh, silence on, uh, silent on criticizing it. I think the issues are very clear. I mean, um, the, the head of the Islamia school, for example, was quoted in an interview saying that uh, there is, you, you're, you're born a Muslim, you're always a Muslim, you can't leave. And that's things that have been told to me untold times for having renounced religion and Islam. Uh, there is threats, there is intimidations. Uh, just yesterday, a 16-year-old girl was killed by her father for refusing to wear the veil. I think Islamic schools very much do suppress did he go and to restrict Islamic school? girls. Oh, of course I did. I lived under the Islamic Sorry, Republic did the person, of Iran. The, the father who killed, did he go to Islamic school? I think Islamic schools, the problem well, with uh, all faith issues. schools, let me be clear that I have a problem with all faith schools because I think uh, if Christian Catholic schools are a little more uh, tame, it's because the Enlightenment has tamed them. Uh, I, I agree with Richard Dawkins that children do not have a religion. We have enough examples in the 21st century to know that it has everything to do with religion. And I mean, I think that uh, obviously there are uh, women, and I think with children it's a very different uh, issue. The veil is a form of child abuse in my opinion, but for adult women I think they but have a right to wear it. Do, do, she's 16. Ah, um, she's, a, she's an adult and therefore she, she isn't being abused no, as well, well by well, wearing Well, this the, is the thing. I mean, there might be people who don't... I, I think socially speaking, the veil is very often uh, uh, imposed on women and I think the problem with um, with the, the thing about education is that it has to help children have access to information be able to question and I think the problem with religion is it's actually very restrictive and prescriptive and doesn't allow people to question because these are the rules and you have to adhere by them. I in fact have, have come to this country and chose to put the veil on. I have come to this country without a, head, um, a veil on. So, 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 not, so not so very wicked is the view. But what is the penalty for apostasy? What is the penalty for leaving the Muslim faith? Um, to be honest, I cannot back that point up. Dr. Mukadam, what is the penalty for apostasy? And, well, um, before uh, we well, keep coming down this apostasy, well, give, well, give, well, well, give, well, give, give us a quick answer if, if on if you what you is the penalty for apostasy. Then we'll come country, country, you Sorry? very well know, if it's an Islamic country, then the Sharia is very clear. Apostasy, apostasy is dealt with the death penalty. Thank you, that's well, all well, I want well, to hear. But what's, that, what's, the, what's the relevance between what happens in an Islamic country and Great Britain? I fail to see the connection. We come to the closing of these questions. Thank you to our panel here, to our specialists, to the audience. Um, thank you to for watching. Goodbye.